We are on the road between Drum to Drocket and a teeny tiny town called Abrishan. Uh, we're high on a hill. The lock is below me through the trees. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but we have a pretty good view up here. Uh, not doing the best today hiking wise. Carol drank too much and we had a horrible hotel and we didn't get any sleep. So we're switching hotels tonight, but we are dragging a little bit. Luckily, we're only going eight miles and it's not too hard of a hike, so not too bad, but walking a little bit slow. Um, so what we're doing today is we got dropped off at Abriashan, which is like a little teeny town. We're actually walking back to Drum Nadrocket. So we're doing this little leg backwards, which is kind of weird. And then tomorrow we get dropped off, or the day after tomorrow we get dropped off in Abriashan again and then walk back to Inverness. And that's the end of the hike, I can't believe it. But tomorrow we have a whole day in Drum to Drocket and we're doing Urquhart Castle, uh, which is a place, it's a castle right on the shores of Loch Ness. Well, it's on a cliff overlooking it, which is where a lot of Nessie sightings have taken place. We're doing the Loch Ness Discovery Center. It's got lots of information about uh, the lock and the history of this area, which is that um, this is actually a fault line. So this whole chain of locks is a massive fault line. So we're gonna learn a little bit about that. And then we're doing Nessie Land, which we went by, which looks awesome. It's gonna be so great. So we're doing that all tomorrow. So I'm definitely gonna post from Nessie Land. It's gonna be so fun, I'm so excited. But today, as I'm walking through some of these teeny Scottish towns, we passed a bunch of farms and we're going through all these um, forests. I wanted to talk about some of the old, old Nessie stories. So there have been Nessie sightings as far back as 500 AD uh, when this was all picked country and the Romans couldn't even get up here because it was so wild and everything. So the Nessie sightings back then were a little more mysterious. Uh, most of those center around the legend of the Kelpie. So the Kelpie is kind of a legendary beast in Scottish folklore that is a shapeshifter. Usually it starts out as a horse and then will lure people into the water or it will have a horse's head and a fish's body. Um, and it will come out of the water and lure people in to drown them, usually children. So it will come up to the, to the shore and stick out its head and it will have a head that looks like a beautiful horse. Um, and it will like lure children in and dive to the bottom of the lock with the children and drown them sometimes. And so this is kind of the, the very deep origin. Some people think that Nessie might be a Kelpie, one of these Scottish mythological creatures. Now the Kelpie legend, obviously very interesting um, and how it relates to what Nessie could be, but if we take the Kelpie legend on its own and think, what could a Kelpie possibly be? Something living in the water that has a horse-like head that might approach people and that people, especially children, might be interested in. I used to work at SeaWorld and I know exactly what that might be. Uh, the animal that I like to call the jerk of the ocean, the dolphin. Dolphins have very horse-like heads, long snouts, uh, eyes in approximately the same place. They can even make sounds that are a little bit horse-like. Dolphins are very curious animals. They'll often pop up uh, to say, you know, hello, to look at humans. And a little kid on the shores of the lake seeing that might not know what they were seeing, might try to follow it in. Um, they make very interesting noises that could be, you know, horse-like or even human-like. Um, and I just saw a brochure yesterday for dolphin tours of Loch Ness. There are absolutely dolphins in Loch Ness and dolphins that get in a lot of these locks because they do connect to the ocean. So dolphins will be following salmon from the sea. So salmon come from the North Sea through the Moray Firth and through the River Ness into Loch Ness and dolphin seals will follow them all the way through and end up in the lock and they may stay there a little while and so there are dolphin boating tours of Loch Ness so there's definitely dolphins in the lock and I think that is a good contender for origins of the Kelpie myth 
uh, because dolphins are smart. They've got that horse-like appearance. They've got some mystery surrounding them with the fish-like body. You know, what are they? Mammal, fish, you know? Mammal, obviously. But to early people, they wouldn't have known. So I definitely think dolphin is a good contender for the Kelpie legend. So is a dolphin a good contender for the Nessie legend? Yeah, I think that's possible as well. They would have, you know, a hump-like appearance if there were a group of dolphins swimming. And they definitely would pop up a lot, make chattering noises. I think some Nessie sightings could be dolphins. Um, but as far as modern sightings, dolphins are a really well-known animal. And I think sightings in the last few decades, everyone knows what a dolphin looks like. So some of the longer sightings and people who've seen heads pop up, I think if they'd seen a dolphin, they would have known what it was. So I think that dolphins are a good contender for the origins of the Nessie legend, you know, 1500 years ago, but I'm not sure they're a great contender for modern things being mistaken for Nessie. Uh, but still interesting to think about those early legends. Um, so I'll leave you to think about that for now. Um, tomorrow we're going to explore Nessie Land and Urquhart Castle. Um, so I'll be back with you tomorrow and then our last day of our hike. But then we do still have a day to walk around Inverness. Um, and that should be a lot of fun too because there's a lot of silly Nessie things in Inverness I want to show you guys. So bye bye for now. I'll see you tomorrow.